Well, hello everyone, and we are definitely gearing up for the holiday season. Can you believe it's December already? What has happened? But I am here to take you to the next level when it comes to your holiday baking, and this is really something special. Before I get into everything, first I want to say a big thank you to Rolling Meadow for making this live stream series possible. And I have to say my usual shout outs. Esme, hello! I know you're watching. And hi, little Lori too. You have to go give your little sister a big hug, okay? Uh, Bonnie, I know you're watching. Peter and Mary Bath. And Darren and Debbie, thank you for joining from Stratford. And I see lots of hellos coming through right now. Wesley, happy birthday. You have been consistent in joining us every week. I know Hermione's joining us. Cherry, you're joining us. So many people who have followed for so many years. Now, this recipe really is something special, perfect for the holidays. It doesn't have to be a wreath shape, but it is my raspberry Danish wreath. So it's kind of a 2.0 on a cinnamon bun and it is beautiful. I'm going to get right to it because we have to make a yeast dough at the base of this recipe and you'll see the full recipe is right below you on the screen and I am going to melt a quarter cup of unsalted butter and let me just weigh that out, 60 grams. It's so much tidier to weigh than it is to try and measure. Let's not put the wrapper in there. Just a little more. Oh, just a little. I seem to be measuring in 10 gram increments here. Just a touch more. I think you know me enough. A little extra butter is absolutely okay. I'll pop this over to melt. And now, Let's talk about the dry ingredients. Oh, I see people joining from the Ottawa Valley all the way to New Zealand and Indonesia. Um, we've got Michael behind the camera. If you're just signing in now, I am making my raspberry danish wreath. I've got butter melting. All-purpose flour is already in my mixing bowl. When it comes to making a cinnamon bun style dough, you can use an all-purpose flour. You don't have to use a bread flour. We're not trying to toughen up this dough. It's an enriched dough because we're using kefir instead of milk, melted butter, and also the egg to add richness. I do add a touch of sugar to the dough. Not too much. We don't want to sweeten it up. The filling is going to be sweet enough. I've got my instant yeast, which means I can add it directly to the dry ingredients. I'm going to just stir it in with my finger for a second. Even though this is a sweet dough, you do add a touch of salt. Because the instant yeast is in the flour and it's not hydrated yet, I don't have to worry about direct contact between the salt and the yeast because they're both dry right now. They're, they haven't come alive. By the time I add the liquid, it'll all get evenly mixed in. I'll just move this out of the way. Hello. Whoa, we've got quite a few people asking or watching from Australia. Well, good morning. Um, thank you for joining. And Cherry is asking, what if you don't have kefir? Because this is what I'm adding as my liquid in the recipe. And if you don't know kefir, it is a fermented yogurt-like drink. So it's more fluid than yogurt, but it's got that tang and the acidity. And I find it helps keep this recipe from being too sweet. If you don't have access to kefir, you could use half yogurt and half milk. That way you get the tang from the yogurt and you get the fluidity from the milk. I can hear my butter melted and bubbling away. And now I'm going to cool down my mixture because my kefir came from the fridge. It's cold, but I have my warm melted butter so the two even out tuck that behind and now I can start the mixer add my egg as I start combining all my ingredients if you don't have a stand mixer you can use electric beaters with the dough hook attachment you can mix it by hand it's a softer style dough so it's it's a tougher one to knead by hand what I like to do if you if you need to knead your dough by hand what I do is I hold back about say 
half a cup or 75 grams worth of your flour. You stir the dough in, a, in the bowl till it comes together. You'll find it's very soft because of course you're missing some of the flour. So it's easier to stir. Then you turn it out onto your work table and you start adding that measured part of your flour. And as you keep adding it and kneading it, your hands might get a little sticky, but put lots of flour on your hands. You'll find that the, then you're not adding extra flour more than the, what is called for in the recipe. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you, Michael? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, oh, Marlis from Germany is watching. Yes, it is pretty late over there. It's after midnight, isn't it? Um, well, thanks for staying up. But it is not midnight in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. So thank you for signing in, Granny. Uh, it's great to see everybody. You know, Sandra, anyone, if you can't stay and watch the full recipe, you know this is going to be posted immediately after the live stream ends so you can join anytime and catch the full version of my raspberry danish wreath i'll just move my ingredients here and i'm going to turn my mixer speed up and let this soften up the moisture's in the center it does make a a dough that really does come together so i find it easier to roll uh, because when it comes time to add this filling, oh, let me tell you, it gets a little messy. If you have any baking questions, I'm going to just let this mix for a minute or so and see, oh, Hermione, I see, oh, you made the creme brulee. Oh my goodness, thank you. And now you're going to try the mac and cheese. Well, it's so great to hear you're following these recipes and it is 606, well now 607, even in New Jersey. Um, <laughs> And now Maria is asking, what is uh, a Danish wreath or bread? Well, what I'm making is an enriched dough, Maria, and it's almost made in the style of a cinnamon bun, but I'm going to use a raspberry filling and then cut it and twist it in a different way and shape it into a wreath. So you can make this in a cake pan, but it won't have the hole in the middle. You could use an angel food cake pan, and I am using a kugelhoff pan or a bunt style pan so you get that natural wreath shape to your to your bread the great thing is if you want to make this over the holiday season I'm just gonna add a touch more liquid there we go I think I was talking and measuring at the same time I think I shorted myself an ounce or two there we go, that's the texture I want to see. So you can, if you want to make this for a big brunch, or if you celebrate Christmas, Christmas morning, you can make this dough ahead of time, you can make it two days ahead of time, put it in the fridge overnight, roll and assemble your wreath a day ahead of time, even put that in the fridge, and then bring it up to let it come to room temperature and bake it the day you want to serve it. That is the key, you want to bake it, the day you plan to serve it, to have it fresh. And let me tell you, the smell of the raspberry and cinnamon and vanilla as this wreath is baking is pretty phenomenal. You can also make it now, if you feel like it, and freeze it. Oh my goodness, I just realized Cecile, I forgot to say hello to you. Hi Cecile, in Edmonton. And so you can see, this is the texture of the dough I'm looking for. It is quite dense, it's not sticky, so I think if you needed to knead this by hand, you could do it without too much difficulty. Are you getting a shot of this, Michael? Yeah. I can't tell what you're looking at. There it is. I'm gonna let it mix for just another few seconds and then I'll move on to the filling. <clears throat> oh, Uzma is asking a question about English toffee pudding, which that's is great because next week, can you believe it's already been, that'll be the fifth live stream? These weeks have just flown by. I am making sticky toffee pudding next week, so you have to make sure you come back for that one. My mom always requests sticky toffee pudding when she comes for the holidays, and so I thought it just perfectly appropriate to make that the grand finale for this series. Oh, Deadhead, I'm glad you wanna make this for Christmas. And Granny, good question. How long you would want you would want to pull if you've made this ahead of time, 
you would want it to warm up for a good two hours coming from the fridge on the kitchen counter before you bake it. And there we go, there's our dough. It's on the firmer style, but it softens up once it rises so it's easier to handle, but you won't have to over flour your work surface. So I'm just going to set this aside and you wanna let this rise, you cover it, let it rise for 90 minutes. If you're making it your day ahead, what I like to do is leave it out for about 15 minutes to let that yeast start working, then I cover it and put it in the fridge and then you can leave it overnight. Let me just move my, we've got over 200 people watching right now, Michael, isn't that great? Hello to everyone. Whoop. Now I, like yeah, hit the like button. We like the like button. I'm just going to make myself a little space because now it is time to roll. No, I have to make my filling first. So the raspberry filling, you can mix this by hand if you want. But what I'm going to do is measure a half a cup of butter and I'm going to blitz that with a full cup of raspberry jam. Oh, Wesley's asking how many people would this serve? This is a grand dessert, so I think you would easily get 12 servings, 16 very easily. It depends how much you like the people you're serving. How big of a portion are you going to give them? The same applies when it comes to cake. So I'm looking for a hundred and, oh there, well, a little extra butter didn't hurt anyone. And I'll get this. I'm using a mini chopper, but this is more just so you don't have to watch me stir butter and jam together for too, too long. I am going to blitz this with my one cup of raspberry jam. I'm going for the raspberry flavor. The red color suits Christmas. And so this way I'm not adding additional sugar. It's actually the sweetness from the jam that is at the heart of this wreath. And that's what really gives it that Danish character. I do like a little bit of cinnamon and I find vanilla is absolutely key that combination of the cinnamon and vanilla. You don't usually put vanilla in a cinnamon bun filling, but here, oh, you just need it with the raspberries. <clears throat> Marlis is asking about stretching and folding your yeast dough when it's rising. With this dough recipe, you don't have to. An enriched dough, um, a regular yeast dough benefits from that, especially a soft dough like focaccia. But an enriched dough, it doesn't really serve an outside purpose, so I don't really find you need it. Plus, you're layering it. It's almost self-laminating, the fact that you're spiraling it and that moisture that seeps in from this raspberry jam filling. we go. If you're stirring this by hand, you may find you get little visible pieces of butter in your mixture and that's absolutely fine. When it cooks, the jam melts with the butter and it comes out absolutely fine. So now I am ready to roll. Deadhead puts vanilla in everything. I'm kind of that way too. If it's not vanilla, it's lemon zest because I'm just as obsessed with lemon zest as I am with vanilla. So I want to show you, here's the dough after 90 minutes of rising. Ooh, Craig, I, I forgot to say hello to you, Craig, and say hi to Kathy when she gets home. Um, and Craig, sorry, I forgot your question. Craig, could you add white chocolate? Craig, I know you like chocolate. Yes, you could add white chocolate, certainly. Um, but make sure it really, it, I would grate it or chop it. You don't want big pieces of white chocolate in this dough or it might burn as it bakes. And that's the opposite effect of what you want. So a little bit of flour. 
So this is an example of a dough that's had a chance to chill for a while. This was made yesterday and proofed in the fridge overnight. And you may find if you're not actually someone like Cherry or Hermione, you're in Greece, if it's humid out and your doughs are really sticky, chilling your doughs make it really easy to handle. Oh yeah, this feels really, really good. So now I wanna roll this into a rectangle shape. And hello, Mo in Chicago. And yes, Wesley, of course I'm gonna have, we're not, I'm not gonna make you wait for 90 minutes, though we could have a really thorough Q&A session if I were to hang out here for 90 minutes waiting for dough to rise. I remember in the middle of uh, our, when the world shut down for a while, we thought about doing a sourdough cam and having a live stream of watching a sourdough starter ferment for days and weeks on end just to capture it. Now we have other things to do. Oh, Jordan, you're joining from Saskatoon. My sweetie Michael's from Saskatchewan, in case you didn't know. Oh, smiley girl. Now this is a great question and actually very well timed while I'm rolling out this dough. Any tips on braiding dough? I definitely have tips. And in fact, here on Oh Yum, if you look up a, my caramelized onion cheese braid from last year, um, that's where to see the detailed step-by-step -step of how to do a braid because what you do is you actually put your filling down the middle so it could be um, a mincemeat filling this time of year or I do caramelized onions and cheddar cheese and you actually cut I'll just make a mark so that I don't know if you can see it I'm not cutting all the way through but you cut almost like a chevron now just to let everyone know, this has nothing to do with the braid I'm making. We just had a question about how to do a braid. So you would cut through and then these strips, you overlap over top of the bread so it looks like a bra braid, but it's not. That's for a filled braid. And if you're doing a braided bread like a challah, you'll want two ropes of dough and you put them down perpendicular to each other and overlap. And that gives you a nice braid that has a lot of lift to it. And I do believe I have a braided egg bun recipe right here on the channel. So that's another one you can look up. Oh, thanks. Rob is moderating. Um, he's the channel manager and he just put a link to that caramelized onion cheese braid recipe from last year. There we go. Oh, this dough handles so well. Not at all sticky. And it's nice because it's actually warming up as I work it here. There we go. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit messy. And this is just part of the process. I need a smaller spatula. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to take my butter, raspberry jam, cinnamon vanilla mixture, Oh, I got a little lump of butter that didn't make, didn't make the trip. There we go. You want to spread this on the entire surface of this rolled out piece of dough. If you're just joining us, I'm making a raspberry Danish wreath for the holidays. And choo, choo, choo. where did my offset? There it is. Get my palette knife. Spread this in a nice even layer. Oh, thank you, Michael. Michael's taking away, in case you hear a rattle, that's him being nice enough to take away the dishes. So this spreads easily. And then because I find the, just the jam on its own is a little too sweet, I take frozen raspberries. And frozen are actually better because A, they're easier to handle when frozen. The fresh can squish, but they'll thaw as the bread continues to rise. But also, it depends on where you live, but here in southern Ontario in Canada, it is not raspberry season. And so it's best to buy the frozen berries, which were picked and frozen at their peak. 
There we go. And now what you want to do is roll from one of the long sides of your rectangle. And I will remind you that this doesn't have to look perfect right now. And I am going to make a mess of this counter. And I stretch it out a little bit. Now, typically, if I were to make, you could make a sticky bun or a cinnamon bun and just cut this into pieces. It would probably make 12, which is standard for a recipe. But what I'm going to do is cut this in half. And so you can see this filling. And again, I remind you, this is where it's going to get messy. Where are we looking, Michael? We're on B-cam? OK. And you're thinking, oh dear, what is happening here? So I've cut these lengthwise. And if you are making a babka, that's actually how you treat this, to twist it, to reveal the inside. But remember, you've got the raspberry jam and the raspberry, so it is quite sticky. I've got my kugelhoff mold that's been lightly greased. And how's that for positioning? Is that OK? Oh, Lisa, wow, you're working on a, your great British Bake Off application? Well, I can tell you that my cookbook photographer, Janice, will be watching. She is addicted to that show. And just to let you know, I am working on my next cookbook project right now. So here, just to show you what I'm doing, I'm not trying to distract you from the mess I'm making. I'm twisting the dough. OK. Twist it. And then I just, the reason I cut the dough in half widthwise and then lengthwise is just to make it easier to handle. Because you've, if you have that full long rope, I mean, you think I'm making a mess now. And there, you just wrap it around. So you can also do this, if you look at the main live stream photo, it's in a skillet, a nine inch skillet. You don't have to have the hole in the center if you don't want to. And if I do that, I start in the middle and I spiral outwards. So this is why I got a little bowl of soapy water because I knew I would need it. Do a little tidy up. I am not going to waste a bit. There, that goes back in. Thank you for staying with me while I clean up. But you know, as bakers, we like a clean workstation. Hey, we're up to uh, 250 people watching right now, so thank you. The key at this point is to cover your bunt and let it rise now for another 40 minutes or so. And after it's had a chance to rise, then it's ready to go in the oven. But you'll find with an enriched dough like this, it's not like a focaccia dough or pizza dough that has lots of yeast. And, and when you actually add sugar to an enriched dough, it gives the yeast something to feed, but it takes longer for it to process. So don't expect it to really double or even fill your large, it, this is a larger pan than a standard bunt pan. This is more of a 12 cup where a bunt is a 10 cup. Um, but you won't find it changes a lot. In your 350 oven, you give this about 40 minutes to cook. And Wesley, I've got every step covered. <laughs> After it's baked, you tip it out to cool completely. And there it is. I need my, my little, where did I put my little... That, that my little straw round doodad. There it is. Thank you. There. And so just the smell of this baking is incredible. But let's not stop there. If you're into decorating, and Mary Beth, I know you love getting into decor. Kathy, once you watch later, I know you'll get into some serious decor. But even something like this, just a drizzle of a delicious glaze is fantastic. So that's the finishing move here. Um, oh, Deadhead, you're asking a good question. Can you wait too long and let it rise too much? It is not 
as sensitive as say a, a baguette or a French loaf or a sourdough that if you overproof it, it then collapses as it bakes and it's kind of airy and dry. Because you've got the kefir, the butter, the egg in there, you've got a little more wiggle room and a little more insurance and it will likely still be moist and tender and fresh. So the answer is yes or no. The answer is it's harder to overproof an enriched dough like this. I've got my, um, oh, and here Ira's asking, could you put the spices directly in the dough, the cinnamon, etc.? cetera? Um, yes, you could. Be prepared for the little nice speckle of flavor. You could even use brown sugar instead of granulated sugar in the dough, but it will change the color a little bit, but it would taste just as delicious. Um, you've got, I've got one cup or 130 grams of icing sugar, and I'm going to pour into that about, yeah, I'm gonna use this, two tablespoons of half and half cream, and I find that just makes a sumptuous glaze. So it sets on top, but it's got a nice little richness to it. That was my little dish that had vanilla in it. So now I've just added just a dash of vanilla to it at the same time. And so we want a fluid glaze. When it comes to a glaze like this, you don't have to measure. You can just keep adding. Oh, I think I'm fine there. Look at that. It's starting to flow just nicely. All right. Give it a good stir. We've got more people joining us from New Jersey. Wesley, you're not on your own. Zig has joined. Um, everyone. Oh, and Uzma is asking, is it like babka? It is in that same vein, just in a different shape. And now I'm going to drizzle that icing sugar glaze over. Just think, there's that hint of cinnamon in there. There's vanilla. The frozen raspberries, the raspberry jam, this really is something phenomenal. And of course you know I'm going to cut into it. We're not just going to stop there. Oh, and we've got Adelia watching from Norway. Well, hello. Thank you for joining. This is in that Kringle type world. Typically, I think those are made with apples, aren't they? I don't know that I have a recipe for that. Well, now I have a project for 2024. There we go. So what do we think about a raspberry Danish wreath? Just, it really does speak of the holidays. If you wanted to sprinkle fresh raspberries, you could on top. The glaze will set. So you want to put the glaze on after your wreath has had a little chance to cool so it doesn't all run off and then it will set in place, but of course I'm not going to wait another minute. And you get that bit of caramelization on the outside. Ooh. And that lovely weaving of the jam and the raspberries throughout. Oh, and if you have a microwave at home, if you've got any leftovers, the nice thing, unlike a Danish pastry, that really is, while this is best to serve at first the day it's baked, if you have leftovers, you just pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Oh, that raspberry aroma comes right back and it is phenomenal. Now here's a question. When you eat a cinnamon bun or something like this, do you eat the outside first or do you go right for the center? I like the soft center, so I'm just going to peel this apart and go right for a bite. Oh, there's a bit of raspberry in there. Mmm. Deadhead, you could totally add a bit of raspberry juice to the glaze and turn it a little nice color of pink. Craig agrees, you gotta go right for the center. Mmm. Nicole, thank you for your kind words. Thank you to everyone. Mmm. That really is something special. Here, let me, I'm gonna cut into it a little more just so you can see the inside, and then I can turn it to the camera. Look at that gorgeous raspberry center. I know you are going to love making this recipe. Thank you to Rolling Meadow Dairy for supplying the dairy, sponsoring these live streams. 
And just a reminder, I will be back same time next week for our last holiday live stream because we all have to then take these ideas and make them our own and share them with our family and friends. I will be making English sticky toffee pudding with an eggnog creme anglaise sauce and a toffee sauce because why stop at one sauce when you can make two? It's been a wonderful to bake for you today. I thank you for joining me. Have a good evening and now you're all set to make your raspberry Danish wreath. I know you've got this. I've got this. Mm. Thanks for the great notes, everyone. Big raspberry flavor. Mm.